Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Ram Krishna. Today I'll be discussing an approach to superficial soft tissue swellings. So etiologies of the superficial soft tissue swellings are extremely varied. They can range from non-neoplastic to benign or malignant neoplastic conditions. Clinical characterization of these lesions continue to be a challenge. High resolution ultrasound with the access to Doppler evaluation is often the first line screening modality that is used to evaluate these soft tissue swellings. It is widely available, cost-effective, and a real-time tool which allows for both static and dynamic evaluation of the swelling. The goal is in the next 10 minutes, I would like to propose an algorithmic approach to characterize to the extent of possible some of these soft tissue swellings which we commonly encounter in our day-to-day -day practice. This will obviate the need for further imaging or to perform invasive procedures. And also we can identify potentially aggressive lesions which will require further imaging in the form of an MRI or a biopsy. So a general checklist which I do before performing an ultrasound evaluation of a soft tissue swelling is to ask for the detailed history. I would like to look for multiplicity, the duration, the rate of growth. Is there any pain, any trauma, any symptoms of infection? Is there any pre-existing systemic illness or malignancy in the patient? Or is the patient on any kind of medication or anticoagulation? The physical examination of the swelling also needs to be performed. I look at the size, the firmness, the mobility, the tenderness, and the overlying skin changes. When performing a high-resolution ultrasound of a soft tissue swelling, use a high-frequency linear ray transducer. Evaluate the lesion in at least two perpendicular planes using both grayscale and color Doppler ultrasound. It is always recommended to use copious amount of jelly and very light pressure that removes uh, the uh, compression of small vessels and missing minimal blood flow. Minimize the color box and lows, use low PRF and low or no wall filter settings. Of course, you can use uh, techniques which are available in certain machines like extended field of view or cine images, which are used to, useful to document uh, large masses and certain dynamic uh, conditions within the masses. So broadly, if you look at a soft tissue swelling, the first thing you need to note down is whether it is solid or cystic. If it's a cystic swelling, if the swelling is thick or thin-walled, it is avascular and shows some kind of communication with the joint or adjacent tendon, you're probably dealing with a ganglion cyst. If the swelling has a thick irregular wall, it's avascular, showing floating internal echoes, and the patient has constitutional symptoms like fever, um, then you're dealing with probably an abscess. The swelling shows a lot of vascularity and may show continuity with the artery or the vein. Then you may be dealing with a pseudoneurysm or a vena varix, respectively. If there are multiple channels and there are calcific lesions within the swelling, which directly represent phlebolids, always perform the compression and release maneuver to show the retrograde filling of the uh, these channels. Then it could be a vascular malformation, probably a uh, venous malformation. Always remember to ask the history of trauma and if there is a history of trauma and the swelling is overlying a boning prominence, if it shows septations and fat lobules within, then it's probably a moral level lesion. So the first case which I have here is a firm swelling over the dorsal aspect of the wrist and that is a swelling which is quite anechoic and it has a hyperechoic internal septation. This is the distal end of the radius, this is the lunate and this is the capita. And you can see the neck of the swelling which is extending almost into the radiocapitate joint and that is the neck of the swelling. Compression and release maneuver was showing you a lot of uh, debris within the floating debris within the swelling. So this was a ganglion cyst. Most of the dorsal ganglion cysts at the wrist originate from the dorsal scaphalunate ligament. They may extend with the neck in with a thin neck into the joint space and may show echogenic debris. The important point here which I would like to emphasize is the ganglion cysts show no internal vascularity. If they do show any kind of internal vascularity, an alternative diagnosis should be sought. This is a four-month-old child who presented with a painful soft tissue swelling over the chest wall. The child was not doing very well, had recurrent episodes of fever, that is a soft tissue swelling, and someone had tried to aspirate it, and that's the small puncture wound that was there. Ultrasound is showing a very thick walled swelling. Uh, it is not fully anechoic, it has got this floating internal debris. And on the posterior aspect of the swelling, we can clearly see a defect in the rib through which the swelling is communicating to. 
Doppler shows there is no internal vascularity around in the swelling, but rather there is more vascularity around the periphery of the swelling. And if you notice, the subcutaneous fat also appears quite echogenic and inflamed. CT 3D image clearly demonstrating the erosion in the rib into which the swelling is communicating. So this was a case of a rib osteomyelitis with a subcutaneous abscess in the chest wall. There is a thick wall around the collection with floating internal debris surrounding hyperechoic area of inflammation and erosions in the underlying lip. The lesion per se itself is quite avascular and clinical history also comes to our aid in the diagnosis of this condition. A 24-year-old male who presented with history of trauma to the wrist following which he developed a slightly painful pulsatile swelling over the hypothenar eminence. Uh, he had undergone treatment outside and someone had actually nicked the swelling and when it bled profusely, they had sutured it. So, the swelling was now progressively increasing size and the patient had pain. So, this is a classical pseudoaneurysm. We are able to see even on grayscale, the aneurysm is communicating with the ulnar artery that is the neck and uh, obviously color Doppler shows the characteristic uh, yin-yang sign which is associated with uh, pseudoaneurysm. A 30-year-old who presented with a painless swelling, which uh, becomes prominent on Valsalva. So as you can see, this is the rest phase and this is the Valsalva phase, where the swelling over the neck is becoming very prominent. Ultrasound clearly demonstrated the swelling was just an expansion of the external jugular vein. And uh, this is when patient was performing Valsalva, we are able to see the swelling was actually, uh, the flow into the swelling was actually seizing up. So whenever he performs Valsalva, the flow is stopping. And when he releases the pressure, the flow is back. MR was also done for this patient because uh, the clinician wanted it. And here we are able to compare both sides with the external jugular vein, clearly demonstrating that uh, this was a vena varix. A 22-year-old who presented with multiple soft tissue swellings, which are painless and present since childhood, and they are gradually progressively increasing in size a high resolution ultrasound showing the anechoic channels with a hyperechoic flebolith within. And uh, dynamic maneuver compression release shows the retrograde filling of this swelling. So, this was a venous malformation. You can clearly demonstrate uh, the phleboliths and the vascularity. A 22 year old with history of trauma over the knee joint with a soft tissue swelling that was slightly painful. So, this is the soft tissue swelling. I have used the external field of view as I had told. For larger swellings, you can use it to beautifully demonstrate the extent of the lesion. So, extending all the way from the patella to the level of the tibia and you have multiple internal septations. The clinching point, however, are these flat globules which are floating inside the swelling. This was a moral level lesion. It develops in closed degloving injuries. It is a hemolymphatic mass. It is often anechoic or hypoechoic with internal debris or septations. And the fat globules which appear as this echogenic foci within. Coming to the solid swellings, they are homogeneous or heterogeneous. The homogeneous soft tissue swellings which are often hyperechoic and located in the subcutaneous region and usually avascular are usually lipomas. If they are hypoechoic swellings, they can be well or ill-defined. Well-defined swellings which show continuity with the tendon sheath and show marked vascularity within are usually giant cell tumor of the tendon sheath. If they show continuity with the fascia, they are fibromatosis. Continuity with the nerve is neuroma. Well or ill-defined swelling which show anarchic internal vascularity. This word is quite important. If the vascularity is not regular and very irregular, then you are probably dealing with an indeterminate mass. This has a wide differential and there is definitely a concern for malignancy. Such lesions definitely need to undergo an MRI or biopsy. So this is a soft painless soft tissue swelling. As you can see here, well defined in the subcutaneous plane, color Doppler showing no internal vascularity. This is a lipoma. Lipomas need not have a definitive capsule. Lipomas can show this ill-defined area, hyperechoic areas with no internal vascularity. So this is unencapsulated lipomas. Lipomas can also occur within the muscle. This is inside the deltoid muscle. And again, no internal vascularity, hyperechoic swelling. So this is an example of an intramuscular lipoma. A 26-year-old firm, painless, slow-growing swelling over the plantar aspect of the foot and the skin over the swelling is absolutely normal. Hypoechoic swelling which is seen here, marked internal vascularity and the swelling is along the plantar fascia. So that is the clinching point here 
it is growing along the fascia as a case of plantar fibromatosis. Another uh, lesion which is showing gradually progressive firm swelling over the arm and when tapping the swelling it produces sharp radiation pain in the forearm and the wrist. So that is seen in the MRI, a spindle shaped swelling with slight internal vascularity. You can see the median nerve is entering and exiting this uh, swelling and that is the median nerve, this is the brachial artery. So this is a median nerve stretch neuroma. On asking for the history, the patient said he had a stretch injury and following that he has developed a neuroma in continuity. So this is a 27 year old, quite an interesting case who presented with a hard, slightly tender soft tissue swelling over the lumbar region. So this is what I was telling, the swelling is quite well defined, located in the subcutaneous plane. We are tempted to call it as a benign lesion. Doppler showed a lot of chaotic vascularity, as you can see very anarchic vascularity, not a smooth vascularity within. So it was grouped into an indeterminate lesion with a concern for malignancy and the patient underwent uh, first an FNAC followed by a wide local excision and uh, the histopathology came out to be a pleomorphic undifferentiated sarcoma. So always pay attention to the vascularity of the lesion. Heterogeneous soft tissue swellings with a history of trauma and showing peripheral calcifications are usually myositis ossificans. Always compare it, uh, your diagnosis with a radiograph. While an ill-defined uh, necrotic lesion with anarchic vascularity again has a wide differential. Patient with left hemiplegia underwent native massage to improve the strength now presented with a tender enlarging mass. That's the ultrasound image showing peripheral uh, calcified or hyperechoic lines with strong posterior acoustic shadowing within the muscle muscle. That's the biceps muscle. X-ray is very convincing. Sheets of calcification is there around the underlying bone is absolutely normal. So this is a case of a myositis ossificans and it is more common in patients with hemiplegia. A 52 year old with firm, tender, mildly tender soft tissue swelling in the gluteal region that is progressively enlarging. So as you can see a large swelling that is noted in the, uh, in the muscular plane and uh, this swelling is heterogeneous, hypoechoic. But what is quite interesting is the vascularity, very anarchic vascularity, very irregular vascularity within the lesion, very suspicious and uh, biopsy came out to be a spindle cell sarcoma. So the take home message is what I would like to show is if you do a meticulous sonographic technique and follow an algorithmic approach you probably can accurately characterize most of the lesions not all of them. Understand the limitations of ultrasound and if the lesion cannot be characterized as a benign entity based on all the uh, examples I have shown you above do not report it as a benign lesion, rather report it as an indeterminate lesion with concern for malignancy and then you should either image further or do a biopsy and be wary of lesions having anarchic internal vascularity because most of more often than not these are more sinister. Thank you very much for your kind attention.